Now, it's not that difficult to tell the difference between a sincere Bible blessing woman and a walking street sell yourself woman. Not allowed to film. No filming apparently. I'm just gonna hold it real casually for you. And that's where it all began. New city, first few minutes, knocked down a shot, and we got into the strolling. Legends of YouTube, welcome to another video. Here we are in Pampanga. I haven't actually been here before, but we're just checking it out. We're gonna go to Koreatown, which is a big one. I'm excited for that. Currently go around a market, hey boys, that we're gonna show you around as well. Also checking out the red light district where I got yelled at to stop filming. We got one night here in Pampanga. Let's make it count. Let's get it rolling. We're in a town called Angeles. I know, right? It sounds like a ripoff from Los Angeles, but that's the actual town's name. Uh, we traveled for about an hour and a half coming from Manila, and we're currently in a market. It's only about a three minute walk from the hotel we're staying in. So we got Gula here off the bat. Hello, hello. This is all most likely locally grown. You see, the thing about Manila is a lot of the vegetables, fruits, meats, and all that come from districts outside of Manila because there's just not enough land space to be farming all that sort of stuff. All the shoes you need here as well. Excuse me, mate. Hey, how much for our Crocs? 150. Do you have a size 12? It does have size 12. Check these out. So my Crocs broke like the other day. 250 and he's offering out these dope as crocs with wicked designs so these crocs like he said 250 pesos about seven dollars look the next day in the croc store and they're selling for over 3400 pesos big difference damn you know the thing about crocs is we can all admit that they're pretty poor quality so these are probably the exact same quality as the real ones. Size 12, man. I kind of like these, dude. They got these ones as well. More of a tan color. Check out some of the stickers on there. They're usually pretty hard to score. There they are, dudes. They're pretty cool. They're definitely gonna fit me, so I'm gonna cop them. There's a purchase, need no Crocs, let's do it. I ended up taking the Converse's off, so I've swapped up. That's like the first store I looked at besides the vegetable store. And now we've got some jerseys and stuff here, if you wanna turn around there, Jane. These are something you'll find in a lot of markets here, basketball being so popular. That is cool as, you'd stress about quality. This is an XL too, but it actually looks quite small, so the sizing's obviously a little, uh, you know, different as well. Hey, bro. Yes. How much for the jerseys? Better. 180. 180 each. So that's like six bucks. Uh, maybe later. And you got all your G Shocks and stuff here. 150 pesos. You know, your phone cases, that's another thing that is incredibly overpriced back in Australia. Same as the Crocs. These things cost probably 20 cents to make. It's just plastic, nothing else. And they sell for like, what, $40, $50 back home. Yo, welcome, welcome. Typical Filipino homeless dog. These dudes float around, no one harms them. They're not scared of humans at all. The craziest place in the Philippines for homeless dogs is 100% bowl hole. Like you'll see probably 200 a day and they sleep on the roads and they get run over and everything. It's all messy. Now, I hate to break it to you guys. Obviously, you know I'm equipped with the new drone now. Brings me a big advantage in the space, even though everyone seems to have one. Searched up the nearest airport, four kilometers away. Definitely can't be doing that. Could uh, get free accommodation in a jail cell if I do that, so probably play it safe. Won't be flying the drone here. Off to Koreatown. Yeah, buddy. Finally made it. We're here at Jung's Kitchen. Shout out to AJ Day, that's his middle name. We're about to walk down, check out this place. It's absolutely hectic. There's lights going on everywhere. The street is a lot longer than you're probably expecting, so let's not waste any time. This is our chance, eh? Let's go now. People usually stop for you. So obviously not every store here is Korean. 
There's a lot of cars coming out and going within the stores. Hey, brother. Which generally means a lot of tips being handed out, a lot of coins, because an easy way to earn coins is if someone gives you a hand to park your car, you throw them a couple. So that's how it goes here. Hello, bro. Here we go. It's looking sweet. Some street food going on here. Stuck in here, Jane. So you saw where we started filming there at Jung's or Zhang. It's the Korean way to pronounce it. Zhang's restaurant. We found this spot that looks local as we saw unlimited pork and beef on the sign right there. These ladies are real shy, they don't speak English. <laughs> They're really shy. We have actually looked at it. It is real free meat. Look, a table just left behind all of these yummies because it's unlimited. So you leave things over, you know? But they do charge you 500 pesos if you leave anything. So I don't know if they got charged, but anyway, we're looking at the menu, we're gonna dig in. Check out the menu here, guys. So we've got our unlimited meat menu here. We ordered the combo. Just like that. So they've got these peanut things. I'm not sure what they're dipped in, but they're bloody good. But I'm only seeming to get one at a time because of the chopsticks. Not even a bad thing, to be honest. It slows me down. Slowly making my way through the beef. I'm having a little bit of pork as well. We're on a rampage here. We've ordered another plate of meat, more of the peanuts. Deep breaths. Feels like I don't really have enough lung capacity because of my stomach being so full. This is the last bit of beef. It was 450 pesos each, which is about 11 bucks. Now maybe a bit more, maybe like 12, 13 bucks. And then that's it. Now we've got to hit up the red light district, which me and Jane both want to do just to like suss it out. It's fun doing in nearly every city. Don't judge me. We have officially made it to the walking street. I'm not here shopping. I've already got my woman here. <laughs> For foreigners, this spot, these spots I should say, because they're in every country, get very, very popular. All the tourists come here and try to find local women, essentially. Now, keep in mind, we're here on a Monday, so probably the most dead night of the week. It's still early as well, absolutely. It's only 8 p.m. here. See for yourself. Foreigners, there's a couple of lady boys. <laughs> Looks like a nice spot to eat. Now, it's not that difficult to tell the difference between a sincere Bible blessing woman and a walking street sell yourself woman you tell by the dressing he was said hello to me james let me know it's mainly the clothing hello brother thought this dude was saying g'day but turns out he was telling me to stop filming well i was unaware so i kept it rolling but these ladies and the blokes as well did not want to be on camera and the overload of makeup maybe the walking stance as well it's all about presentation that will tell you what the girls needs are and yeah you know all the rest see those two ladies sitting there on the aqua chairs the one on the left yelled out to me in filipino jane obviously translated it she told me to stop filming no filming allowed it will get confiscated so out of respect for her i'm not the one selling my body i probably wouldn't want to be on camera either so we just made it a little more discreet when you think about it, would you want to be caught on camera with a random girl paying her just on a walking street? You definitely wouldn't be. So I understand why people didn't want me filming. No, they won't be able to take it down. There's some crazy videos on YouTube. 
So viewers, we just made it out. This is where the road officially ends, where I started filming here at the Walking Street. After about, you guys saw it, about five minutes, a lady screamed out and said, you'll get that confiscated if you keep going. I'm just like, well, it's obviously because you got caught selling yourself on camera, but yeah, whatever. So what did I do? I started playing it down a little bit, being a bit more discreet with it all. And then I saw a police tuk-tuk not far away and thought that I better pull out. So here we are back in the safe zone where I can film and document my experiences. So here we are, hitting the markets now. Just some side markets. G'day lads. Hey brother. Hello. Hi. A lady boy. Hello. Hello. A lot of our women's attire here. I suppose while all the lads are busy on the walking street, all the women come here and buy clothes. Clothes and then rich <laughs> hair down. Because there's a lot of salons. Now we're getting into it. Yeah, he's close to the road. Hello, brother. This daddy. Hey, how are you, man? Okay. So Jane's making a presumption that they're open 24 7. So. He's getting in. Good on him, mate. There's the cook. Head chef. Hey, brother. Look, it's the Jeep yard. Are we going to get in trouble if we walk through? Nah. Can't overthink it, can't overthink it. You can get in trouble for anything, really. Yeah, it's closed. It's a closed terminal. But you can see there's still a lot of people floating around, maybe doing a bit of maintenance. Yeah. So they've all got very similar designs, right? Like in Manila, you'll never find the same one twice. But these ones are heaps different from one another. We only have one route. They've only got one route. Good point. We'll give you an actual pause so you can look at the details on there. Main gate friendship. A Jeep just rolled in. Last month. It's got some groceries. <laughs> right. They're in here. Maybe, eh? Hey, maybe you didn't get two bags either. We're in. This is the talk of the town, this place. This is the Aqua Beach Club. Super, super popular. Very expensive too. Check out what happens next. You won't be able to guess it. Millionaire Spa. What? Wow, Jane. Oh my goodness. Looks amazing at night though. What a setup. Check it out. People assume this stuff doesn't even exist in the Philippines, but it's here if you've got the money. It is here. We've reached the top. Can we check inside? We got in. Bit of a club going on up here too. It's lit for a Monday. There'll be some drunken souls up here. Good spot to have some babes. To a certain extent, you guys know before me that I'm actually going through the private venue right now. I had no idea. As soon as I went up those stairs, 
I was in private territory where you got to pay heaps of money to even enter this venue. So we got some really good views here from a really expensive spot. This is where I was officially in the Koreans lounge. They actually booked a private venue and I was just driving through with the camera. Crazy shit. So that last video you saw of me in the corner, turns out that's like private venue and I'm not actually allowed to be there. Security come up to me and they were like, oh, you're not meant to be here, this is private, you know, and like slightly pushed me, it wasn't anything aggressive. Just sort of get out of there before I get in trouble. And then some older white dude in his 50s or maybe even early 60s came up to me and he was like pointing at his face and he put a cross through his face. He's like, don't film me. He was wigging out hard. I'm waving my camera around. Obviously, that's like the spot to be, the most expensive place. So I thought I might have stepped on some people's toes in there. So I just thought, let's get out of here. I didn't, uh, I didn't push the boundaries. So anyway, we got that footage. We did the walking street and we did Koreatown. So wicked video. Thank you for watching. Jane, thank you for being a part of it. We'll see you in the next one. Not sure what I'm going to do next. I'm sort of planning day by day, but I know it'll be a good one. And I'm going to try to cram everything, my, all my activities into one video, just like I did today, just like I did with the last vlog. I'm staying in Manila for a couple months. See you later.